today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in October. So let's get started. The first two books that, that I read in October were Blanky by Keelan Patrick Burke as well as Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. So these two novellas are vastly different but roughly around the same length. Sour Candy follows a man who is suddenly in charge of or the parent to a boy that he's never met before. Um, and Blanky is about a, gr a grieving father who has to deal with his wife distancing herself from him as well as finding his deceased child Blanky when they buried her with it. I, I love these. I love these so much. First of all, I love the cover of Sour Candy so much. It's so good. And out of the two of them, I would say that my favorite was Blanky, but that doesn't mean that I didn't love Sour Candy. I just loved the way that Blanky ended and the way that everything kind of like mixed together. I loved both of them, but Blanky was my favorite. I don't remember the rating I gave them, but I'm pretty sure that I gave them really good ratings because I did really, really enjoy these books and I would recommend that you pick them up. They're really inexpensive and they're a lot of fun. After I read Blanky and Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke, I picked up Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Now I did create a book review for this, so I will link it down below in case you want to hear me talk about it more in depth. But basically this is about a little boy and his mother who moved to a new town. They're having trouble fitting in, they're having trouble affording their new lives, but then it kind of goes further when the little boy, Christopher, goes missing for six days and comes back different. And this is a horror novel. I really, really enjoyed it. Again, if you want to hear me talk about it, there's a whole review about it. Please go watch it if you're interested. But long story short, this is really fun and I gave it three, I don't know, I gave it 4.75 stars. I only remember that because it's a ridiculous thing to say. So after reading Imaginary Friend, I picked up the, the Furies by Katie Lowe. This is a beautiful cover. I love this edition of this book. The American slash North American cover is absolute trash. It's hideous compared to this at least. The back of the book says obsession, witchcraft, murder. And like with that kind of like small tiny little word association thing, I would be sold. I would be in love and I was. And then I read it. I read it and I was underwhelmed in every way that I could be. So the book is about this girl who moves to a new town. She becomes friends with this one girl who's kind of like like different and like kooky in a way I guess. She doesn't care what, like, what, like, what people think of her but our main character does. She's like shy and meek. You know the cliche plot line. You know what this looks like. And so the book begins really strong. She's, the book begins with her talking about how, how they found her body and how they don't feel bad about it, blah, blah, blah. But then the book goes on and it just makes no fucking sense. Like, I didn't understand what the purpose of it was because by the end of the book, there was no resolution to fucking anything. I thought this book was mediocre, I thought it was um, cliche. Either way, the whole book is just boring in a way. Like things happen, but for some reason I just like didn't care. I don't know. So I think I gave this three stars, but in hindsight I would probably give it two stars just because I wasn't a fan. There wasn't, there wasn't enough witchcraft, there wasn't enough like actual character development besides cliches. So. That was a bummer. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, speaking of bummers. <laughs> After that, I read uh, Middle Game by Shinanen. Shinanen? Shinan I still don't know how to pronounce her name. This, by the way, is a beautiful cover and I love the way that this looks. I listened to this on audio and I have almost no feelings about it. So going into this, I was expecting something along the lines of Library at Mount Char, where there's like these two children who are kind of being forced into this 
like magical world and they're being used for their power and taught for their power I was expecting something like that where it's kind of like it's like really action-packed and really like fast-paced kind of gruesome in a way what I got instead was uh, like 300 pages of character development of 12 year olds which usually is like fine I'm into that I love I love a good coming-of-age story however how do I even describe this I can't even put my finger on why I didn't love this and like don't get me wrong this isn't a bad book by the way I guess I should say the synopsis Jesus this is about Roger and Dodger they're twins except they've been separated at birth and they're living different lives and but they realize that they can communicate telepathically through each other's like minds or whatever and they realize this at a young age and then it kind of goes from there and there's like this whole other like meaning to them because there, there's like this corporation that wants to like control them or use them in some way this to me the pacing was weird there was so much time spent on them as children and then no time spent on them as adults like very little time was spent on them as adults and like what I wanted out of this book and what I expected was something that was gonna be gruesome that was gonna be action-packed that was gonna have a lot of fucking magic in it but instead it's just a bunch of character work that's like very very thinly based on action like there's little 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 action in this book and I felt like the stakes weren't quite high enough in my opinion I wanted more out of it basically and I didn't get it the end of the book is where there's like the action but it's barely even to me recognizable as action I don't know I thought that this was good but then also not good I think if you go into it expecting it to be sort of like a slower paced character book with like a little bit of fantasy and magic in it you're fucking good dude you're gonna love it however because I went into it thinking that it was gonna be this huge action-packed magic fucking cool ass thing with these like quirky twin characters I, I left it feeling disappointed I think that's more on me than it is on the book but yeah so just know what you're getting into <laughs> anyway we've, we've spent too much time talking about middle game we have more disappointments lucky us <laughs> the next book uh, is another one that I didn't like uh, and that is the monster of Ellen de Haven this <laughs> this is awful <laughs> I did not like this at all like okay let me get look okay. at so this is a book about a guy who is a serial killer um, and he calls himself the monster of Ellen de Haven um, and he he's human but he's not human he can't die he's like a mortal and then he meets this dude and they become like buddy buddies and it's kind of queer like they're, they're both a little bit gay but they're not gay it's very confusing this is weird this is a weird book I don't understand what the point was of writing it because by the end of the book things just feel unresolved unexplained it's just it's just a weird book and it's just it's very small there's so much happening in the first half that feels kind of like it shouldn't like it feels like stuff that's useless to the out to the overall arching plot and then the last half of the book is just fucking packed where they're like oh this is all of this like lore and myth and like maybe it applies it just seems like it doesn't seem like it was thought through yeah I just didn't enjoy it and I don't know if I would recommend it because it's not scary because it is a horror novel it's not frightening the queer representation is weird the main character the monster guy just keeps almost sexually assaulting the other guy which is not great and the ending is stupid yeah so I give this two stars I wouldn't recommend it I think it's got potential I just don't think that the, it's fully 
realized. After that, I did read things that I liked. So we have Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. One of you guys recommended this to me in the comments. I listened to it on audio while I was doing my whole bookshelf thing. And then I loved it so much that I had to buy a physical copy. So I bought a physical copy. <laughs> anyway, this is about a girl named Ollie. And Ollie comes across this woman like weeping by the river. And she's like, the fuck is going on with this lady? And so she asks her like, hey, are you okay? The woman's about to throw this book into the river. Ollie steals the book from the woman and then like runs away. Fast forward a few days, she's going on this trip to this farm with her um, classmates. She's been reading the book, she's really interested in it. It's about, it's called Small Spaces. It's about this whole creepy thing. Um, but then she finds that the woman who was weeping by the river, who was who weeping by the river, I can't, I can't say it, who was weeping by the river runs this farm that she's at. I don't want to say anything else because it's, that's almost even too much. But either way, it's so good. It's this like middle grade, tiny horror novel and it's so good. The characters are so cute and funny and you empathize with them and the creepiness is just so there. Like it's just like these creepy scarecrows and the antagonist is like kind of frightening and like maybe is Satan? I don't know. Either way, it's so good. It's so fun. It's so creepy. This was perfect for Halloween. And this is perfect for, I think, I think if kids really want to be scared or something that's like actually frightening, because I think if I had read this when I was a kid, I would have actually been afraid and I think I would have actually loved it. But who knows? I didn't like horror that much when I was a kid. But I think that was because of child's play. Anyway, this is really fun. And I think I think you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Okay, the last book that I read in October. It's kind of cheating. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of cheating. I didn't finish this before October ended. I finished it like on the first, no, I finished it on the second. I have to include it in this wrap up just because like, because I want to. I make the rules, it's my life. Anyway, <laughs> no one cares except for me. Anyway, so I'm talking about If You See Her by Anya Allborn. This is a haunted house novel. It follows this guy named Jesse and Jesse and his friends go out to this like famous uh, abandoned house out in the middle of nowhere outside of their city. His two friends, Reed and Casey, go into the house. Jesse is a pussy. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He stays outside. And then um, eventually Casey comes back out and is like, we need to leave. And Jesse's like, where the fuck is Reed? And the guy's like, we need to leave. And he's like, well, where is he? And he's like, we need to leave. Reed is dead. So Reed killed himself inside the house. They leave. Years pass. Um, he's married. He's got a kid. He's like forgotten about it. Until his friend Casey, the guy that was at the house with him that night, is like, hey, I want to go back to the house. You should come with me. And then shit just fucking turns upside down and goes crazy. This is, this is really fun. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm not going to say that I loved it because I didn't love it. It's not my favorite book of hers, but I think it's a lot of fun. And I think if you read it, you wouldn't be disappointed in it. It does what it tells you it's gonna do. It's a spooky house story. It's got fucking ghosts. It got, it's got demons. It's so fun. It's fun. The, the descriptions didn't necessarily frighten me. Like I wasn't frightened while reading this book. But I think if someone was new to horror or wanted to get into the horror genre and needed like a kind of like a, like a soft landing spot, this is it. It's not too, it's not too scary, but it's still spooky. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think this is just a lot of fun. And I think most people would enjoy this. I think the characters are well developed. The ending, it was satisfying to me. Um, it had a very horror-esque ending and the plot moves really well. It progresses well. And the characterizations of um, Jesse and his family are really well done. I really, really enjoyed this and I think most people would. So that was my October wrap up. 
those are the books I read in the month. Let me know down below what you read, what was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like this video. We love horror here. We talk about spooky shit all the time <laughs> to our own detriment. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!